Romans chapter 1, verse 21 through 32. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as a God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of their immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree, that those who do such things deserve death. They not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. So I decided to go over this today. Um, like the last time I made a Bible study, I kind of just flipped through till I found something I thought was relevant. I mean, everything in the Bible is relevant, but I felt like something that was just reaching out to me today. I'll say that way. Um, and as you look in society today, so when it first says, verse 23, and exchange the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. And the first thing I think of when I read that is Mother Earth. <laughs> I've seen a picture of Mother Earth um, depicted as some spiritual being or goddess or whatever with reptiles and amphibians and animals all around her. And there's lots of images like this. And that's just what I think of when I read that line. I know it's not probably referring to that, but that's kind of what it's become. Um, when he says that, he's just speaking of idolatry in general, um, worship, worshiping the creation and not the creator. So idolatry can be anything from the love of money, um, sex, um, your possessions, and uh, you're putting those before your relationship with God, and therefore you are um, committing adultery, idolatry. Um, and when you do those things, it's going to kind of help draw you away from your relationship with the Lord. Um, it's not going to um, build your relationship. Anything you put in the way of your relationship with God um, will harden your heart over time. Um, I think that uh, your heart becomes calloused. When God says, um, therefore God gave them over in their sinful desires, I think that when I read that, it makes me think of... Um, when you become a Christian, you can feel this relationship growing. You can feel the Holy Spirit inside of you. Um, and I think that when you're giving your heart over to your evil desires, you are um, diminishing your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, your relationship's getting weaker, um, and God is not pursuing that relationship with you at that moment because you're not putting in the effort. You're not pursuing Him. Um, I think God pursues you when you pursue him. Sorry, I have some notes here. Stuff I wanted to hit. Um,
Okay, so at the end of this here, if we flip the page, it says, this is verse 32. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. So before I became a Christian, I lived a worldly life. I uh, let the world influence me. I watched things I shouldn't have watched. I did things I shouldn't have done. I drank, I partied, I did all those things. And one thing in common was when you get around those kinds of people that are partying, doing drugs, doing things they shouldn't be, you know, having sex, they always want to have you do it. They always want to um, try to convince you to take part in it. And I think it actually brings them pleasure to know that you are taking part of it like they are. Um, you know, I can think of instances where people would try to get me to do drugs or something, in which I was never into drugs, I never really did drugs, but um, people definitely tried to convince me to do them. And uh, that's what I think of when I read that line right there, that verse. Um, and that's not the only example I think that just living in a worldly sense, watching the wrong things on TV, listening to the wrong kind of music, um, reading the wrong kind of books even, can change your perspective on things and callous your heart over time. So your heart is getting hardened the more um, sinful acts that you take part of. So the there's consequences to all those things. And uh, the consequences can be just falling deeper into sin, you know, depression, things like that. But there are physical consequences as well. Like, I mean, obviously drugs, terrible things can happen. If you're sleeping around, terrible things can happen. STDs, pregnancies, things like that. Um, and all these are consequences. That is what makes the Bible so, one of the things that makes the Bible so convincing to me is that if you live by what the Bible says, you're not going to run into the same issues as if you are living a sinful life. All these consequences happen because of sin. And if you get rid of that sin, those consequences are gone. You don't have to worry about it, which is, which is great. <laughs> you know, this is a very good guideline to live by. And I hate to call it a guideline because it sounds like I'm, I don't know, diminishing it, but I'm not. Um, base your life off of this Bible. Build your relationship with the Lord. Um, it'll truly change your life. I can feel a difference every day. Um, let the Holy Spirit work in you. Once you start pursuing the Lord, you will feel that relationship grow and start cutting out the things that you used to do, the things that you used to pursue and lust for, and the sins that you used to have. You will find that those no longer um, draw you in like they used to. You can say no. Um, they seem bad. Like, I don't listen to any of the same music I used to listen to um, just because of the language and the subject matter of it and I can really tell now that when I go back and I hear those songs I think man I used to listen to that so it can really change your life just uh, give it the opportunity give the Lord a chance to work within you and grow that relationship um, so it's very important to me I wish that or I hope that you Grab your Bible and you open up to Romans and you read the whole chapter. But if you want to read Romans chapter 2, or I'm sorry, chapter 1, God's wrath against sinful humanity, um, it really paints a picture of um, how we're supposed to live and the way things are going right now. And it's just crazy that these were things going on 2,000 years ago and they're still going on today. Um, history does definitely repeat itself and we need to learn from the past mistakes and how these people fell into sin and the things that happened to them and how um, God was against that kind of behavior. And unfortunately, people don't really learn. Um, so we're falling right back into those terrible, terrible things that we did at one time. Just look at all the crazy things right now. Look at the opening ceremony at the Olympics. Like that was just disgraceful. <laughs> and it's being pushed on us every single day. So it's important to fight back and um, really put up your guard against those sinful ways. And uh, we need to, as Christians, um, sorry, there's a wasp flying around the camera. You might've heard it. 
but you need to put up your guard as a uh, Christian and fight back against the evil one who is right now, I think we're in a spiritual war. I really do. Um, the more my faith grows, the more I'm realizing the things that are wrong in this world and the things that are just really crumbling our society. So do yourself a favor and open up your Bible and read something today. It can really work on you and really change your life. So thanks for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoy it and I hope uh, you have a blessed rest of your day. Thank you.